Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you're having a great day. So, cold and windy outside. Don't want to be out in the yard working or anything. Thought I'd come in here and make a video. So yesterday I made a video and I had my Hollyland Lark M1 wireless microphone in my collar and it kept scrubbing. And I said, boy, I can't do that if I am doing a talking head or a tutorial or something because it just sounds terrible. And my, my big old double chin here keeps hitting it. So I got my USB microphone back out. This is a newer NW7000, which this is just a $30 microphone with a boom arm. And I'm using OBS Studio 2902. And I want to show you the ways that I found by watching others and reading and everything and just tweaking OBS to make this microphone sound better. So first off, I'm going to make a noise when I do this. First off, on this USB microphone, it has two flat sides. You can't talk directly into it. You have to talk into the side of it. So that's that's the first thing that I have found with this. And when you touch it and touch the arm and everything, it's gonna make a roaring noise. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come down to the screen and I'm gonna show you what I got and first off we're going to be in the audio mixer right here and as you can see i've got my audio meter going here and when you talk you don't want to be up in the red real hard even if you get really loud you don't want to be in there so you want to have a good even no distortion uh, voice going so what we're going to do we're going to go over here to the three dots and this is in Windows, but it works the same in Mac. So works the same. We're going to go to the advanced audio properties first. So what we have, we have a sync offset right here in the middle. Now what we have, we have a, a lag between the microphone, the USB cable, and the computer. Now if you have a fancy audio interface with an XLR, you're not going to have this. Or if you have the microphone going directly into the camera, you're not going to have it. But this one's going to have a, a lag. So what you can do, you can put a headset on. You can go over here and turn your monitor on. If you're looking at my screen, here it is, monitor and output. You can turn that on. You can clap. You can clap like three times and listen to how much your offset is. Now from what I've found and what I've done by tweaking 220 milliseconds, is about my offset. So if I turn that off, my lips will be moving, but I won't be doing anything. So, so 220 with this computer and this microphone seems to be all right. And it's that way on, on the MacBook too. So that's just what it has. So that's those are the settings we need to set right there. All right, now what we have to add now is filters. Let me open up my iPad so I can explain these filters. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the three dots again, go up to filters. We'll move it over here. All right, my first filter is noise suppression. So what you have in a, in a studio, room, office, bedroom, whatever, you're going to have some kind of low level noise, whether it be a computer fan or the HVAC, or a light fixture or something's going to have a low level hum. Well, this takes it out. Now, this is the default setting right here. This is the SPEX. They have a RN noise that uses more CPU. I just didn't think I need that. And a negative 30 dB works for me. And what noise suppression does. The filter is effective at removing low-level noise from computer fans and other electronic devices. You can adjust the noise suppression to remove background noise, but keep in mind the filter will affect the overall sound of the source as well. So you may have to have five, negative 5 dB, you may have to have negative 50, but it's going to affect your voice when you do that. All right, the three-band equalizer. This is to make you sound a little more broadcasty 
you can do that or you can make it sound a little more poppy snappy i mean you can get your voice to wherever you wherever it feels comfortable listening to it it does for me i'm not an audiophile i have problems with my ears anyway but i raised my highs up 2 db i lowered my mids 2 db and then i raised my lows 4 db for me in this microphone that seemed to be the best way and what you can do you can go over here to this little eyeball on the left hand side and you can turn these off and on and you actually listen so listen to noise suppression I don't know if y'all can hear that and now when I put my heads on I can hear a little hiss or a little hum uh, I've got that anyway I've got tinnitus so it sucks so anyway, the three band equalizer, if I turn it off and I turn it on and I talk normally into the microphone, you should be able to hear it a little different. Okay, gain. Your gain it can be used to increase the volume of a source. If possible, the gain should be adjusted before it is captured into OBS to avoid unwanted noise. So you can have it at the top if you want to. I found it's better here. I've got mine boosted to 3 dB. Now what you want to do if you go down here to the audio meter, you want to be just barely touching the red from what I'm found. I've heard a lot of people say negative 3, but that just seems really high. So I, I'm looking at negative 5, negative 6 dB if I get really loud and get right into the microphone. I'm not talking really loud today because I don't want the dogs to go nuts. But I am talking right into it. And it's what negative eight. So hopefully that sounds good. I could probably boost it up a little more if I go up to four. Then I'm up in the yellow, up in the red. Then, but I don't want it to go too high because when it goes up to YouTube or Rumble, they're going to compress it anyway, and it's going to sound bad. So, and I don't want that. Okay, the next one is an expander. An expander can be used to remove unwanted background noise by setting a low level threshold for audio that you want to be removed. The expander works similar to a compressor but on low level noise. Therefore, the expander has similar features as threshold, attack, and release. So I, if I turn that off, it, it'll probably let me go lower than what I'm comfortable with. So I turn it back on, and hopefully that makes it sound, a, it keeps everything level. You want everything, you don't want peaks and valleys and stuff in your audio. A compressor is the next one. Yeah, let me go right here. The compressor can be used to make any audio source sound more full. Compressors allow you to limit audio peaking beyond 0 dB by making loud noises quieter when they peak. The main compressor adjustment is called ratio, and the higher the ratio, the more compression will be used to reduce the loudness of audio when peaking. And it's got several other um, different adjustments that you can use, but I keep it at the default. All right, so I have a limiter as my last one, and I have my limiter set at negative 3 dB. I do not want my audio to go above negative 3 db if it does that then i'm peaking real bad it's screeching or whatever and it's going to be compressed really hard when it hits youtube and i really don't want that so that is the list of filters that i use and i hope it sounds good to you that's what i'm really after i could possibly care less if it sounds good to me. I want it to sound good to you. I don't want y'all to flip a video up and go, God, he sounds bad. I don't want that. I want it to be comfortable listening to me, and I want you to learn something, and I want to learn something, and the whole bit. So there we go. That is a $30 studio microphone, and it's USB coming into OBS Studio, one cable, and... Uh, I think it sounds good. I I would love to have a Shure SM7B sitting here and 
an XLR interface and all that, but it's just not in the cards for me at the moment. So, so anyway, if you have any comments, you have any questions, if y'all use a certain microphone, let me know what it is. I'd like to know. You know, I've got a couple of uh, Rhodes and uh, got some uh, lavalier mics, and then I've got a couple of these. They don't cost much, but they work good. If y'all like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to be notified, and if you're over on Rumble, subscribe and follow over there. My videos are there. Leave me a comment. Leave me a question. Enjoy yourself. That's what I I love watching YouTube to just kick back and learn stuff and enjoy stuff and, and see what's new. That's one of the things I love to do. Uh, I'd rather watch YouTube and Rumble as any TV show anyway. So, But anyway, I hope y'all are having a good day and a good weekend. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching. And hey, watch one of these other videos that's going to pop up. And if you're over on Rumble, just watch them all.